tech family, g'day. With me is the new Dell XPS 9500 15 inch. I absolutely love this laptop and through this review, I'm going to tell you why, but I'm also going to tell you why I'll be returning it. I'm Josh and I buy and review a lot of laptops and unfortunately in Dell's case, return a lot of them. If after watching this video, you like what you watched, make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. It shows your appreciation for the incredible amount of hours that goes into making these. All right, the model that I have here is the 10750H model from Intel's 10th generation line with six cores and 12 threads. It has 16 gig of RAM, a one terabyte SSD and a G4 1650 Ti. Normally I start off with performance, but today let's start with the chassis instead, as it is completely redesigned for this year. Let me first say it looks stunning, solid construction all the way around, the edge to edge display just looks so elegant and modern, even compared to the MacBook Pro 16, which really is saying something, as the bezels on that laptop aren't that big to begin with. It's a good amount smaller than the MacBook Pro 16, however it actually weighs a tad more at 4.6 pounds versus the MacBook Pro 16's 4.5. Yes, I know my laptops weighed a tad more than what the manufacturers claim, but it is what it is. Because these laptops weigh a similar amount and both fit into a 15 inch laptop sleeve, I am going to draw comparisons between the two as they are in the same class of portability. A lot of people might be like, no, you should only compare the MacBook Pro 16 to the new Dell XPS 17. That laptop for a similar spec is much heavier at 5.5 pounds and the chassis will not fit into a 15 inch laptop sleeve. Anyway, Back to the 15, it feels quite dense to hold due to its size to weight ratio. The screen can be opened with one hand and I notice no sharp edges. The display is excellent, one of the best I've ever used. It actually has more pixels than a standard 4K at 3840 by 2400 due to its 16 by 10 aspect ratio. This aspect ratio is a dream for productivity work, including using office applications and coding. I personally like it better than Microsoft's 3 by 2 aspect ratio on their laptops because it is also decent at playing movies as it doesn't force super big black borders above and below the movie. The brightness is insanely high, which makes it a good laptop to use outdoors or in a bright environment. Even though the glass on the screen does pick up some reflections, the high brightness negates this. The display isn't quite as good as the MacBook Pro 16's in terms of color accuracy, but it's still an excellent display. I notice no dead pixels, no backlight bleeding, and no PWM flickering used to lower the brightness. It's also a touchscreen, which is a nice touch. The keyboard is quite good. Large spacious keys, Apple key travel, and a well-known keyboard layout with no keys in odd places. That being said, I do find it feels quite mushy to type on. It doesn't quite reach the heights of the Surface Book or ThinkPad keyboards, but I definitely found it better than Apple's Magic Keyboard. The trackpad is larger than previous years, but there is a serious issue with it. It seems to be kind of loose, where there are two clicks to it rather than one. It's like you press down and you pass click one, and then you have to click down further for it to actually register. That means if you only pass click one, it doesn't register the click. Take a look at this video of me trying to click into the drop down box on screen. You can hear it clicking, but it doesn't register. What sucks is this isn't like Apple's trackpads, where the trackpad doesn't move at all and the click is software based. This trackpad is mechanical and likely can't be fixed by a driver update. Now, before anyone says, I have a lemon, no I do not. There are many early buyers on Reddit reporting this. Check out these threads. Due to this issue, I had an unusually high amount of misclicks. It is annoying, but I was able to make do after I got used to how to click on it. For over 2000 US dollars, I will return mine to see if I can get one without this issue. The port situation is almost perfect. It has a fast full-size SD card reader, yay. It also has three USB-C ports, two of which are Thunderbolt and all support charging. I also like that there are USB-C ports on each side for maximum flexibility of where to plug in. I just wish it had one USB-A port. Let's take a look at performance. As per usual, these tests were run all with the latest drivers, BIOS and Windows updates installed. Geekbench results were excellent. You can see that the new Intel 10th Gen 6 core chip performs better than the older 9th Gen by around 10%. It was only bested by the 9th Gen 8 core chip in the MacBook Pro 16 and might I say not by that much, likely due to thermal limitations in the MacBook Pro 16. The 9th Gen 8 core chip in the Aero 17 beat it handily, but that is a substantially bigger laptop with much better thermals. Taking a look at Cinebench R20, which maxes out the CPU, it's a similar picture. My only note here is pat on the back to the $750 Lenovo IdeaPad 514 with its Ryzen 4 700U for performing on par with this laptop. I recently crowned it the king of budget laptops and results like this show why. I'll post a link to that video in the description below. 
When we look at power draw under load, you can see that this laptop initially starts by drawing 90 watts and then drops to 39 and slowly increases to 45. It's about as expected, but again, props to the Ryzen laptops. Take a look at how little power the IdeaPad 514 used to achieve the same performance results as this laptop. Please, manufacturers, start putting Ryzen CPUs in your high-end laptops. Here are my CPU performance results, and as you can see, this laptop hit 4.1 GHz max and then settled down at 3 GHz when under load. Nowhere near the claimed 5 GHz in the marketing. When running these tests, the CPU temperatures sat close to 100 Celsius, often hitting that mark, similar to the smaller XPS 13. I did try all of Dell's performance modes and found little difference between them, even when I undervolted the CPU by negative 100 millivolts. The only exception being cool, which appeared to boost the fan speed while substantially dropping the power to the CPU. In real world performance, the laptop performed extremely well. Starting the laptop and opening a Word document were both very fast. I got excellent results in my coding tests as well, including starting the integrated development environment IntelliJ, compiling Java code, starting the JBoss application server in debug mode, and reloading a large MySQL database. Premiere Pro export times to the popular H.264 format were great as well. Gaming performance in this laptop was also excellent, given it isn't a gaming laptop. On screen are my Firestrike scores. As you can see, this laptop scored almost 9,000, which puts it well above the GTX 1650 in the MSI Prestige 15, and within striking distance of the GTX 1060 in the Alienware 13R3, which was the go-to laptop gaming graphics card for many years. Needless to say, it had no problems playing basic titles like League of Legends at way more than the screen 60 FPS on ultra settings at 1920 by 1200. In fact, I played a couple of rounds of the more intensive title Battlefield 1 with the settings on on screen and got a solid 60 FPS in combat, which is very good. Let's talk about fan noise. When doing light tasks such as browsing the web or using Microsoft Word, you will hear the fans, especially if you're in a quiet room. They tend to come on for a while and then turn off, which actually makes them more noticeable since they have a higher pitched sound to them. By the way, as I mentioned earlier, I found that Dell's quiet mode didn't really do a lot here. That being said, under heavy load, it's actually one of the quieter laptops I've tested, maxing out at 43 decibels. One interesting thing with this laptop compared to others is if I lift it off the table while under heavy load, it really sounds like a jet engine. Somehow Dell have managed to keep the loud fan noise well constrained. Overall though, I am quite sensitive to fan noise and I didn't find this laptop that bad at all. It's noisier under light loads than the MacBook Pro 13 and 16, which are mostly silent, but it isn't as loud as many laptops I've tested. It's probably fine to use in a classroom or a quiet library. By the way, I didn't notice any coil wine in my unit. Chassis temperatures, the ones you would actually feel when using this laptop. For basic tasks, the laptop gets a little warm where your hands are. It's noticeable, but not overly distracting. And again, I'm sensitive to this sort of thing. When gaming, I did notice a significantly high temperature on the left side of the keyboard deck compared to the right. This felt a bit uncomfortable, but nowhere near as uncomfortable as the Razer Blade 15, whose chassis temperatures get really hot when gaming. Under full CPU load though, this laptop did reach similar temperatures to the MacBook Pro 16, but didn't get as hot as the furnace known as the XPS 13 9300. SSD speeds were good, and I'm happy to report substantially faster than the underwhelming results I got from the 13-inch XPS's 1TB drive. Wi-Fi speeds were excellent, and it comes with the AX1650 Wi-Fi 6 chip. When I first heard the sound from the speakers, I was like, wow, they're really nice. They are very loud, have nice stereo separation, and the speakers face up, so you will have no degradation in sound quality when using it on your lap. Have a listen. After using it side by side with the MacBook Pro 16 speakers though, I thought, well, these are some of the best speakers on a laptop that I've heard, but they don't reproduce the same range of sound as the MacBook Pro 16. Bass was non-existent and the highs sounded muddy. That being said, the mid-range where vocals are was phenomenally clear. Overall, these are in the top 5% of laptop speakers that I've tested, but they aren't number one. The MacBook Pro 16 still retains that crown. Audio latency on this laptop was excellent. The best score I've ever got on a PC laptop. I literally ran a code compile while the latency test was running and I could not get it to falter. Here I am testing the webcam in excellent lighting conditions. This is how it looks and sounds. The fingerprint reader worked well, as did Windows Hello facial recognition. The charger is small for 130 watt and uses USB Type-C. The laptop would not charge off the smaller 13-inch Dell XPS's 45 watt charger though, which is odd as the MacBook Pro 16 does charge off it. Keep in mind for light usage, I found this laptop's processor only draws 5 watts to 25 watts of power, so this should have worked and would have been handy. 
It does charge off the MacBook Pro 16's 96 watt charger though. Battery life for light usage like browsing the web and writing the script was around 7 hours with the screen dimmed by 3 notches on this model's 86 watt hour battery, which is pretty good. I'd assume you could get more with a lower resolution screen if you dim the brightness more than I did. I had no blue screens or crashes during my time with this laptop. However, I did have one complete lockup when I plugged in a fairly standard Anker USB-C to Ethernet adapter. I had to hold down the power button for a long time to force a restart. Not only this, but others are reporting many issues that I have either encountered myself in this laptop or the 13-inch XPS 9300. For example, the screen auto-dimming even though all auto-dimming settings are disabled, high pitch fan noise, the laptop occasionally freezing, and the screen going black for a couple of seconds when you plug in the power. This last one viewers have told me is caused by the HDR setting that you can turn off, but it really shouldn't happen to begin with. Overall though, I personally found these issues occurred less on my 15 inch XPS than on the 13, but moral of the story is this, there are risks associated with purchasing this laptop, so I would only buy it from a seller where you have a no hassle 30 day return period so you can properly try out the laptop to ensure you don't have the faulty trackpad and you can handle the other issues. Now apologies folks, because I'll be returning this laptop due to the trackpad issue, I didn't want to open it up to show you the internals. That being said, I did some research and apparently the SSD is user upgradable and so is the RAM. And lastly, it is very competitively priced compared to the MacBook Pro 16. At the time I made this video, the laptop was priced at $2,299. The equivalent MacBook Pro 16 retails for $2,799, but it does include the 8-core processor. However, as I showed you, it doesn't perform that much better. And if you go for a 32GB of RAM model with a 2TB SSD, the price difference balloons to almost $1,000. So let me wrap up, I really like this laptop a lot. I think it is an excellent competitor to the MacBook Pro 16 and other high-end laptops. I like the keyboard better than the MacBook Pro, it has an SD card reader, it has Wi-Fi 6, and if you do any gaming, this is the winner, as it can play modern games at decent settings. The reason I choose the MacBook Pro 16 over this is if you like macOS, you want that slightly bigger screen, better sound, and a cooler feeling chassis. For most people though, I'd save the money and get this, so long as you get one with a working trackpad. This laptop is really just great at everything and is my new all-round recommendation for a power user. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, yes, smash it. Hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. Until next time, I will catch you later.